everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm so happy to be able to come on and share with you guys a doggy piece themed card that I made for my dear friend Kathy, who is Huckleberry Herbs and Art here on YouTube. She is hosting a wonderful challenge and there's lots of different ways to participate. Rather than go through all those details, I'm just gonna go ahead and link to her challenge video. What inspired me was a quote that I saw on Pinterest, uh, probably about a month ago that said, what a beautiful world it would be if people had hearts like dogs. And then I knew I could do a peace symbol made out of little dogs using the Mama Elephant uh, Little Dog Agenda stamp set. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. So the first thing I did was took a couple of circle dies. This is from the Diamond Dies Ginormous Nesting Circle Die Set and took a pencil and lightly traced around the large circle and then for the smaller circle I went down toward the middle uh, and then did kind of a uh, upside down Y and I made it the thickness that I thought would be perfect uh, for having the little dogs fit inside and now I'm gonna go and trace the outside of that circle connecting the areas that uh, would connect that Y upside down with that circle, if that makes sense. So this creates the peace symbol sign. And I'm just making sure that my pencil marks are really light because I'm gonna be erasing all of these in a minute after I do all the doggy stamping. This is the Mama Elephant Little Dog Agenda Stamp Set. It has so many cute puppies doing fun things. And I'm using a stamping block, a plain acrylic block, Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, and a Stampamajig, which is something that's kind of a little more old school for repeated stamping. So I can try to not, you know, move my stamping block after the first stamping, because I know I'm not a good stamper, and I'll need to repeat the stamping for most of these little dogs. So what you do is you place the little stamp image on the stamping acrylic block, in the upper left corner and then position it the way you want it right up against that stampamajig and then that lets you lift up the stamping block re-ink it and then put it right back where the stampamajig position is so it gets right on the first stamped image even if you're doing two or three repeated stampings and you can see here that as i'm doing the stamping uh, I'm wiping each stamp clean, putting the next stamp in the upper left corner, positioning it where I want, and then leaving that stamp jig in place while I go re-ink and stamp again. And generally speaking, this works pretty well. Um, occasionally, I will shift the stamp jig just a little bit, and I'll get a little bit of that um, kind of not perfect stamping, but that's okay because I know I'm going to be coloring in these puppies and for those that have kind of not a clean stamping, I can use a darker brown for the little puppy. I've skipped around a little bit so that you don't have to spend all this time watching me do this exact same repeated thing. I've decided to show this section here because I wanted to share with you guys how I go about finding the puppies that I think will fit better in the spaces. Some of them have things that they're holding that go way up to the right or way up to the left. Some of them are in positions that I think I can tilt their body a little bit. So I'm just trying to make sure I find good positions for each of the dogs doing their various activities. And some I'll try to position over a little, shift over to a little bit to the right or to the left or up or down. And that's what I'm doing here, as you can see. I'm shifting this little puppy that's like a superhero puppy over to the right over here because it wasn't gonna fit in that tiny space over on the left side. Um, and as the piece symbol, if it gets filled in more and more, it's harder to find the right puppy to fit into each space. It actually just miraculously turned out that I got to use all but one of the little puppies from the stamp set. The only one I didn't use is the one holding the bag bags of money because I thought, you know, do dogs really care about money? No. And that's one of the things that I think makes them so wonderful and uh, good examples of peace and brotherly love. So 
Now I've stamped out the whole thing. I've erased all my pencil marks and now I'm going to go in and Copic color each of the puppies. I've sped this up a little bit and again I'm going to skip around a little bit but basically I chose some warm grays uh, W1, 5, and 7. I'm going to go around and color up you know every third puppy or so, third or fourth puppy or so with just different spots. Uh, I also decide because the W7 is very dark that even in those spots that are W7, I'm going to color in the areas by their eyes with the W5. This little puppy is going to have lighter spots. Um, and this part is just so much fun. There's nothing, there's no way you can make a mistake here really because these puppies in nature come in all different colors and with all different spots of different shapes and sizes so i'm just going through as you can see i'm picking out some of the puppies to have darker ears where my stamping had shifted a little bit and it wasn't a clean stamped image and coloring with a w7 hull you know hides a multitude of sins so here's another one that i had not colored in very or stamped very well and i'm going to just color it a little bit darker and that really hid most of the kind of messed up stamping i decided i'm going to give this guy little uh spotted eyes as well and i'm going in like i said with a slightly lighter w5 right around the eye so you can still see the pupils I end up not being so concerned with that later, and I'll show you why. But in the meantime, I'm trying to make sure that even the darkest puppies uh, have a little bit of lightness to those dark spots. This little superhero guy I think is so cute, and I decide I'm going to color in his outfit so that he not only has a cape but also has like a little unitard superhero outfit as well so i um just colored in his little paws rather than his whole body and this little guy with an umbrella i decide it would look cute colored up kind of like a skunk or i don't know yeah i guess more like a skunk than a panda bear but anyway i just i had so much fun deciding how i was going to color up all of these puppies and you can see I'm skipping around some of these dogs because I want to add some kind of warmer, more tan brown shades as well for some of these dogs. I wanted to keep them looking more natural in those realistic colors, but you could go wild with this. You could make this peace symbol with rainbow colors and make the little dogs look like they were stuffed animals or something. Um, Anyway, I thought for this particular uh, card, I was going to do this colored up with more natural colored puppies. And some of these dogs, I thought it would make sense to give your place an, uh, or an, uh, your eye a place to rest. So I'm going to just color them plain. So this is a kind of a paler gray puppy, more like Weimaraner colors. Uh, if you can imagine little round puppies like this being a Weimaraner. Um, and then some I'm going to add little spots to later. I decide this little puppy could go a little bit lighter, so that's why I added the W0 as well. It looks um, at the end more like a gray puppy, but that's fine. I'm just trying to add a little diversity. Now, this is the color spectrum, the E50s. Uh, that I use to color in the brown puppies. So this one, I have I think I've started with a E53, 55 here to go a little bit more warm colored. I wanted this one to look kind of more like a golden doodle coloring. And I'm skipping around here as well, but just making sure that I'm going to color all the puppies um, so that no two puppies right next to each other are exactly the same. And in fact, I'm mixing up the color combinations a little bit. So that's all the puppies colored up and now I'm going to color up their accessories and in order to do that I decided I was going to go with rainbow color so these some of these accessories I'm going to color in with yellows and I think I add another yellow later but I wanted this star to look like it had dimension so I'm coloring it up so that the left and bottom parts of the balloon kind of star would have that dimension also with the basketball i want to make sure that all these accessories look rounded or three-dimensional so i'm making sure that even with these tiny little areas i'm using at least one or two at least two or three colors uh, to color up and create a little bit of dimension for that cape i wanted to go with a red uh, i'm using two shades there as well 
And I'm also trying to be conscious of mixing around the colors so that around the whole piece symbol, I don't get two green accessories right next to each other or two yellow accessories right next to each other. This little guy was holding a beer. Uh, this little guy is holding a little container of popcorn. So I decide to color up the popcorn container red and white. The popcorn itself is a light coal gray CO or C0. And then I added a little butter topping with a Y11. These maracas are going to be red and yellow and so on and so forth. This coloring is super easy, so I'm not spending a lot of time showing you detail blending because the images are so small, there's barely any space to do blending. But as you can see, I make a point of adding at least two, if not three colors to each little accessory um, color so I can get a little bit of that three dimensionality. This little guy, I forgot that the little parts of the star uh, were kind of scattered around him, so I had to go back in and color that. This guitar turned out to be blue, just so I could repeat the blue in a different place. Um, and I'm going to give it little uh, yellow-orange highlights. I wanted to deepen the shadows in that megaphone. And for this little bowl of noodles, I thought repeating that yellow would be good there. There's so many choices you could do, obviously, for coloring, but I thought having this rainbow of colors would be bright and fun for these kind of more natural colored puppies. I wanted to repeat the blue one more time down here at the bottom of the P symbol, so I made that paintbrush handle blue, and I realized all of a sudden that I had no other place for to repeat the green of the coffee cup over on the right, so I made that box green. Um, and then the presence gave me an opportunity to mix in all the different colors. Um, so I'm going and doing that real quick there. Now I'm coloring this beautiful heart that this puppy is holding. I'm using the R35 and then shadows with the R37 just to add some dimension. And then for the bone, I decided to C0, a cool gray, very pale would be nice to add some shadow. And I decide I'm gonna add some shadows to all the little puppies that are actually white, where their shadows, I'm using that C0, just to add a little dimension to those white areas on these puppies as well. And now to fill in the kind of gaps between the puppies and make sure that the symbol, the peace symbol is really visible, I decided I'm going to add some little dot details. And I'm doing that with three pale blue colors, those that are shown on the left there, the caps. And I'm just going in and filling in the spaces. I won't show you all of that. It takes a little bit of time, but it's really easy. And I think adding those little dots really helps fill in the whole peace symbol look rather than having it be a jumble of puppies. Now I'm going to back this little square card front with some shimmery blue cardstock because I think that'll be a nice, clean, crisp frame. And I'm, I've am i printed out on my computer the sentiment that I shared in the beginning, and I'm putting that in the inside of the card. I end up stamping two of the little puppies, one with a bone and one with a heart there, as you can see, off camera. And then... I'm putting the card front on that shimmery blue cardstock, and then I'm going to put that with some wet glue, actually, on a corrugated craft card base, which I think will add some nice texture to this card and make it look very natural, which I think is part of that kind of piece uh, granola feel. So this is a close-up of the puppies at the top of the peace symbol. In these close-up pictures, you can tell that I emphasized all the puppy eyes and noses with a Sakura black glaze pen. This is a close-up of the bottom of the peace symbol, and this is the completed card. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to check out Kathy, Huckleberry Herbs, and Art. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, crafty day.